What's going on everybody? Today is semester 10, my last semester in Georgia Tech's OMSCS program. And today we're going to be doing a final review on MGT 6311 Digital Marketing. Now, like I said, this is my last semester in Georgia Tech's OMSCS program. And if you'd like to see any of the other classes I've reviewed throughout my time here, check out any of the videos above, which are all on my channel. But without waiting any further, let's get started on the review for this class. Let's jump in. Last semester, we did a final review on CS6515, Intro to Graduate Algorithms. Now, this course might be the most popular course in Georgia Tech's OMSCS program because it's required for almost every single specialization within the program. If you'd like to see the full review of this class, check out the link in the video description or check out the video you can find on my channel. All right, so MGT 6311 digital marketing. Now this class really covers three major topics. It starts off talking about advertising and it goes into display and paid advertising. After that, it moves on to and continues with SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. And anybody who's familiar with YouTube or has their own website is probably very familiar with this term. Lastly, it wraps up by talking about marketing and it goes into video marketing, mobile marketing, and email marketing. So the grade distribution for this class is pretty simple. It's broken into four major categories. The first category is mini case discussions. Now this is something that you'll have almost every week and it's, it's really not that complicated. You'll have a little section in the textbook that you'll have to read um, that's usually one to two pages long and it'll talk about a specific case study. And then you'll do a post that is usually an answer to three to four questions, as well as a response to somebody else's post. And this really doesn't take a lot of time, uh, maybe 30 to 50 minutes if you're a slow reader like me. Um, but this is worth 20% of your grade. Next, you have major case discussions. And these are a little bit bigger. And I'll talk a little bit more about what they're made up of in the next slide. But essentially, there's five major case discussions, and that takes up another 20% of your grade. Lastly, there's a midterm and a final, which each take up 30% of your grade, making a total of 60% made up from just exams, which isn't too bad, but is still the majority. So it's a pretty simple breakdown of the grading for this class. Overall, um, this grading is kind of worked out for me, but I'll talk more about each piece in the following slides. Major case discussions are comprised of a two to four page response to a long form case study, usually about nine pages. Like I said in the previous slide, there are five in total major case studies. Now each one of these consists of about a nine page paper, sometimes a little bit more and sometimes a little bit less. And after you read that paper, you respond to a set of usually about three to four questions in that two to four page format. Just like I was speaking about the time commitment of the minor case discussions, these major case discussions don't take a huge amount of time. For me, it usually took two to three days, and I would call myself a slow reader. So for you, it could be even quicker than that. And just a side note on the grading for these major case discussions, I found the grading to be very easygoing for both the minor case discussions and the major case discussions in this course. Lastly, we have the exams for this class. Now, this class has two exams, a midterm and a final, and the exams consist of about 30 to 35 multiple choice questions. Now, just to be clear, these are multiple choice questions, so they're not multi-select, um, they're not true and false, they're multiple choice, and you usually had, I think, four to five um, points that you had to select one out of. Now, they're closed everything, which means no notes, no looking at videos, and no looking around on the internet, but the good news is that almost all of the material comes directly from the lectures. So if you've paid attention in the lectures, you'll do quite well on the exams. And we can see for both the midterm and the final, the average score for the exam was about a 31 out of 35, which is quite well. And if you want to have a little bit of tips on how to study and do great on these exams, my tips would be review the lectures. And for me, what that means is I would watch the lectures each week as the material came in, 
and then I would also rewatch all of the sets of lectures for that exam before taking the exam, and that way it was right fresh in my mind. Additionally, I found it useful to go on Quizlet and look at flashcards for both the midterm and the final, and I was able to do very well on both the midterm and the final, so I think those study tips uh, really did me well. All right, so at this point we've covered what the class goes over, as well as the grading scheme for the class, the minor case discussions, the major case discussions, and the exam format and what to expect. Now we'll take a look at the pros and cons for the class. Now the pros are, for this class there's no programming, and for me that was a nice relief after nine semesters of hard programming classes, or at least eight semesters if you don't count CS6515. So it was nice to have a class that was a little bit pushed away from programming, but when I say no programming, I mean no programming. I didn't open up Python at all for this class. Now additionally, this class, in my opinion, has a very low workload. Comparing it to the other classes that I've taken in the OMS CS program, this is probably the least workload class out of all of them. So just be aware of that. Lastly, it was definitely a pro for me that the material was applicable, especially for my YouTube channel here. I was able to apply things like the SEO techniques just to my YouTube channel and hopefully see some results. They haven't come out yet, but hopefully over time I will start to see some results. Now while this class definitely has a few pros with it, it comes with a few cons, not a ton, but a few. First of all, the textbook for the class, and that's for the major case discussions, not the actual textbook, but for the major case discussions, you have to purchase that. It's only $20, so it's really not a lot, but when you're in a master's program and you're already paying for the course, it does seem a little bit unfair that you're also paying for the material. Well, this was the same case for my undergrad classes. This was the first class in the OMS CS program that I actually had to pay for the course material. Lastly, you only get one submission on the homework, and that's for both the major case discussions and the minor case discussions, as well as obviously the exams. What that means is you will submit the assignment once and then be opened up into the section where you have to reply to another person's post, or in terms of the major case discussions, you get to watch an extra video that talks a little bit more about the case study. Now, well, this might be a good idea for that side of things, it does add just a little bit of stress when you're submitting that report that you didn't, let's say, misspell something or make some silly mistake because you won't be able to go back and fix it if you realize it, let's say, later that night. So just a little bit of added stress, but really not a big deal. So who is this class good for? Who should take this class? Well, first of all, students who are interested in advertising or marketing, this class is a great one for you because it teaches you a lot of the basics and it was really a nice broad form of knowledge for somebody who really didn't know much about that subject. Lastly, students who want an easier semester or students who wants to pair this class with another class, and that's really my big advice for this class, definitely pair it with a harder class like CS6515, machine learning, or uh, any of the computer graphics classes that I found to be a little bit more difficult, this class would be a great pair for those. So lastly, the big question, would I take it again? And for this question, I do say yes. I wouldn't say it's an astounding yes. I definitely liked this class, but like I said, it was one of the easier classes that I've taken in the OMS CS program. I would find it to be a really good pairing class, and overall that's probably what I wish I would have done. I wish I would have paired it with one of the classes I had taken before, but it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it, and I definitely would take this course again. All right, well that wraps up my final review on MGT 6311 Digital Marketing in Georgia Tech's OMS CS program. This is the last review I will do for this program because this was my last semester and I graduated. So I'm very happy to report that. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to see any of my other reviews I've done for other courses in the OMS CS program, check out my channel and I'm going to try and put them all right up here. If you've enjoyed this content, please leave a like on the video. It really helps me out. And if you have any comments or questions about this class or other experiences I've had in the OMS CS program, leave a comment in the comments section. Now I'll probably be making a few more videos about the OMS CS program broadly, but this will be my last final review. So as always, like and subscribe.